Welcome to Unique Parenting. I am Bee Moist and today you guys we're going to talk about social media. It's a topic that I have not covered and I have not covered it intentionally because it's really difficult to cover that topic. It's hard to come up with advice and information to give to parents that they can actually execute. I'm really big on information and advice that can be executed at home or any other setting. So if I don't talk about it, that's because I'm trying to work on, well, how can you do this? And prior to this, my children have been really young. So I've only been advising based off, you know, client experiences and of course research and all the other good stuff that I know but not personal anecdotal, you know, piece of information from my kids. So my kids are still too young. They're not on social media and they will not be um, because of it's just really difficult to navigate that world prior to understanding who you are as a person. Now, I'm not against it because I'm on social media. You're watching me on social media, a social media outlet. So I think it is a wonderful tool to be utilized in the best way, but kids do not necessarily know how to do that in the most efficient and effective way at certain points in their life. But if your child is on social media and they do have access to it, what can you do? What are some you know precautions that you can put in place to help them navigate that world? I am big on the information is power. So really giving children information about what it is. Stranger danger is real to us, but not necessarily to kids because a stranger online isn't really a stranger anymore. It is someone they have a relationship with. It is someone they've been talking to. It's probably someone they've known for years and you may not even know about it. So that's not a stranger. That's a friend. That's a a best friend sometimes. So how do you have that conversation? Well, well, you never met this person, so they're not really your friend, but they kind of are. Um, I come from the you know perspective of virtual friends are friends. Virtual friends are real friends. Just because we haven't physically met does not mean that we're not actually you know friends and we haven't created a relationship and we don't have a bond. So parents need to wrap their mind around virtual friends are real. And not everything that is, you know, tactile or tangible is the only thing that's real. That's just an antiquated form of thinking about friendships and relationship where children currently in this digital era don't feel the same way and it really isn't true or accurate anymore. So while, while my kids won't be on social media prior to a developmental stage that I feel that they are ready, if your child is, reevaluate whether or not it's something that they're ready to do. If you have a high anxious child, right? Social media may not be the best place for them because you can easily get fed information and don't know how to filter it because you have anxiety and you don't have frontal lobe development because you are a child. So really think about that. I mean, adults have a hard time navigating social media. I don't know how many of you out there suffer from FOMO, but you know, that's built out of looking at what someone else is doing and thinking, oh, I wanna be doing that too. And you know, we didn't have access to other lives prior to social media, you know, outside of like, you know, lifestyle of the rich and famous, um, totally dated myself. Um, but we really didn't have access to that. So, but now we do, I can see how anyone and everyone lives um, based on just turning on my app and just looking at it but I'm an adult and I can filter information and I also have mental health resources that I can access in case if it gets out of hand. Children do not and may not know how to do that. So really, when it comes to the world of social media, let's figure out how to do this together because I'm not against it. It's, it's, it's not a bad thing. I, I live to follow HGTV. <laughs> I love seeing what new plants exist in, you know, some plant arena. Like I, 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 I live for that stuff. So it's not bad at all. It's just a matter of how we're using it and the lack of information that comes with that. So really, let's think about how to create an environment where social media, you know, and electronics are done in a healthy way. And it starts with boundaries, restrictions. But if you're not there yet, Let's start with a conversation. That's the first step. Let's teach kids about, you know, yes, your virtual friends are real because the minute you say they're not, you've lost them. 
okay? And if you lose them, you can't teach them. So let's talk about, you know, virtual friends are real. Here are the scenarios. These are some of the things, body parts that may be, you know, taking pictures of and being sent to you. Let's have these real conversations with kids, especially neurodiverse children who tend to developmentally be behind when it comes to the social aspects of life and may not be able to catch on. Or if your child has high anxiety, um, if your child has impulse control issues and they're just going to send, 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 or look, 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 or binge or whatever it may be. So let's figure out how to have that conversation first before you introduce social media. And if it's already been introduced, let's take a pause on it and have that conversation and reintroduce. Remember, you're the parent, so you really can do a lot. <laughs> There's a lot that you can do and get away with because um, you're in charge. So I am very excited that, you know, we can have these conversation in a very safe space and also in a place of non-judgment and education and hopefully you can you know navigate that world with your child so do not forget that my book is currently available in hard um cover and it's still also available in soft cover so if you have the ability to buy a hard copy for a school or an organization so that way they can have access to it i'm sure they would love that gift and i would love it as well so in the meantime i want you all to enjoy your unique parenting journey with your unique child.